السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين أما بعد Today we move on to the next chapter in Al-Adab Al-Mufrad The Prophetic Morals From the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And the time of his Sahaba رضي الله عنهم أجمعين so today we begin hadith number 90 from these narrations compiled by this great Imam, Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah. The chapter is the chapter of kissing one's children. Qublati Sibyan, Babu Qublati Sibyan. So this is the kissing of one's children. Imam al-Bukhari, he's mentioned his chain of narration and that is that Umar bin Yusuf narrated to us, saying that Sufyan narrated to us from, Hish from Hisham, from Urwa, from Aisha, radiallahu anha, the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that she said that a Bedouin came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, Do you people kiss your children for we do not kiss our children so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded to him by saying then what can I do if Allah has pulled out the mercy from your heart this narration it is sahih it is authentic then in the next hadith Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah he said that Abu al-Yaman narrated to us saying that Shu'aib informed us from Az-Zuhri that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he kissed his grandson Hassan bin Ali And they were sitting alongside him, Akra bin Habis at Tamimi. So Al Akra said to the Prophet, وسلم, he said, Indeed, I have ten children, and I have never kissed a single one of them. So the Prophet وسلم, looked at him. And then said, Man la yarham, la yurham. Whomsoever does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. And that chain of narration, it is also sahih, it is authentic. So from these two hadith, we realize the connection between mercy and caring and kissing one's own children so this is from the virtues of Islam and the excellence of Islam and that is the presence of mercy in the hearts of the Muslims and the believers that every time a Muslim learns something and he attains something of knowledge that he acts according to it and when he does so the good for him is even more that, he is, that the good that he attains becomes plentiful because every time he learns he acts so here we have two narrations the first of them is the surprise of the Bedouin Arab when he said to the to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you people do you kiss your own children for we do not kiss our children so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam connected this action to rahma to mercy by saying to the bedouin what can i do if allah had snatched out the mercy from your heart showing that 
this type of good treatment of one's children, it is mercy. Secondly, in the next hadith, that the Prophet Sallallahu again showing love and affection for his grandson. And he showed that affection by kissing him. Qabbala Rasulullah Hassan bin Ali. The Prophet Sallallahu kissed his grandson Hassan bin Ali. This was his grandson through his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha. So this behavior of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he sets an example for the Muslims and he also naturally that when this, lo this, this love and affection is shown to one's children that this is from the effects of the mercy the effects of that mercy and gentleness meaning from the effects of that of that mercy is gentleness with regard to one's children and softness towards them and affection towards them and to bring them happiness and by kissing them so that the child he knows the extent of the love of his father for him and his mother so then the child becomes attached to his mother and to his father because he feels that affection and at the same time this is an act of worship and obedience because it is from the effects of the mercy of Allah which Allah has placed and gifted to the believers and placed in their hearts for this reason the Prophet wasallam said to that man Aqra' bin Habis al-Tamimi who had ten children and he had never kissed a single one of them so the Prophet ﷺ said, Whomsoever does not show mercy will not be shown mercy. Meaning that from the means of earning and attaining the mercy of Allah is that the person, the servant of Allah, that he shows mercy to other others besides him from amongst the people and among other creatures to show the creation of Allah mercy. And the most deserving of the mercy of the people are the weak ones. And the children, of course, are from the weak and vulnerable. And they are more attached than other people. Meaning, they are more responsive to other people. So they are attached to their fathers and to their mothers. And this love and affection that is shown by the parents towards their children is a means of the embedding of those children within the family that they become embedded and they become a part of that family and they have love and respect so the parents they show that love and respect towards their children and likewise dutifulness and the children they respond with good conduct and dutifulness towards towards their parents and this is due to what the parents put forth for their children whether boys or whether girls of that goodness and of that mercy and of that affection and likewise one should be one should be cautious and be warned from preferring boys over girls in this regard as you find many of the people who have with them the traits of jahiliya and ignorance that they give preference to the boys over the girls in that which the sharia does not permit and nor does it allow whether it be meaning that you are not allowed to give preference to the boys over the girls whether it be in terms of kissing them or greeting them or showing them mercy or spending upon them or in teaching them rather it is obligatory to be just between all of the children in displaying your love and affection and your giving of gifts and so on just as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Ittaqullaha wa'adilu fi awladikum 
where the Prophet Sallallahu said, Fear Allah and be just between your children. The hadith reported by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. So then Imam al-Bukhari, he mentions the next hadith. And that is, Babu adab al-walidi wa birrihi li waladihi. So this is the chapter of the good behavior or the good conduct of the parent and his duty to his child. So here, Imam al-Bukhari, and this is hadith number 92, Imam al-Bukhari, he mentioned that Muhammad bin Salam narrated to us. And he said that Abdul A'la bin Abdul A'la al-Qurashi informed us from Dawood from bin Abi Hind from Amir that An-Nu'man bin Bashir radiyallahu anhu the companion that he narrated to him that his father took him to Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam carrying him in his arms so that was when Nu'man was a young boy a young child so his father carried him to Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said O oh Allah's Messenger I call you to bear witness that I have given this my son Nu'man such and such meaning from my property so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said have you given that to all of your children so Nu'man said that his father said no so then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said then go and find someone else to bear witness meaning that I will not bear witness go and find someone else to bear witness then he said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the father of Nu'man bin Bashir do you not want that they are all equally dutiful to you he said yes so then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him then don't do that, don't do what you're doing. The hadith, it is authentic, it is sahih, meaning don't give to one without giving to the others. And Imam al-Bukhari he mentioned that the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about go and find another witness is not an allowance for him, it is not an allowance. It doesn't mean that if you go and find someone else, then what you've done is correct. No, that's not the meaning as we, as we shall make clear. From the benefits of this hadith is that it is a must to ask the scholars and the people of knowledge with respect to the ahkam of the sharia, with respect to the rulings of the sharia and Islamic law. So that the Muslim, he learns the truth of that which the book and the sunnah guide guide him towards meaning that it is good alhamdulillah that this companion he took his son to Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he sought from him to bear witness and by doing so because he wanted the approval of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that it was an opportunity for him to be corrected from the benefits also is that it is obligatory wujub al-adl it is obligatory the obligation of being just from the father between all of his children in terms of giving he should be just between them not give preferential treatment to the boys over the girls or to one boy over the other boys or to any child over the rest thirdly it is forbidden to help a person upon disobedience regardless of what is what the excuse or what the justification is it is not permissible to help a person upon disobedience you shouldn't say well that's you know it's for my son or it's for my mother or the mother says it's for my sons or the son says well i'm only taking i'm only listening to so and so not allowed it is not allowed to aid anyone in an act of disobedience regardless of what the excuse or justification is 
Fourthly, that it is legislated in the Sharia to write and bear witness in the affairs of wealth. In the affairs of wealth, when people are making contracts or they are giving or they are taking, that it is legislated to either write it down or get it witnessed. So here we find that the father of Nu'man wanted the Prophet ﷺ to witness. So he wanted it witnessed that he is about to do something. And likewise in other affairs that resemble that, to avoid differing and dispute in the future. Because it could lead to disputation in the future that a person may say, well how do you know that, you, that Fulan and Fulan gave you that? Or Fulan and Fulan withheld that? So when there's witnesses, or that there is something written, then that becomes a reminder for the one who forgot and it is also a reprimand for the one who wishes to take the rights of others. Fifthly, that it is not to be understood from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said فَأَشْهِدْ غَيْرِي Go and take someone else as a witness. That this should not be taken as an allowance by the Prophet ﷺ for him to go away and find someone else as a witness. Why? Because the because that which is to follow will clarify why the Prophet ﷺ did not witness. And therefore, likewise, the same would apply to anyone else who is called to witness. So rather, the statement of the Prophet ﷺ is in fact a warning to him that I the Messenger of Allah will not witness. So go and find someone else, meaning that you will not find anybody else either who follows the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to bear witness for you. Because it is not correct what you are doing. As we mentioned in the hadith that we quoted earlier from Sahih Muslim, اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَعَدِلُوا فِي أَوْلَادِكُمْ Fear Allah وَعَدِلُوا and be just between your children. So, what the father of Nu'man wished to do here, and what he, what he presented to the Prophet ﷺ, did not, even though he did not intend it, he didn't know. But it involved injustice between the children. So that is not allowed. So be careful, my brothers and sisters, with regard to your children, that you are not, that you do not give preferential treatment to some over others that you do not prefer the boys over the girls or that you prefer one child over the others and when you give in gifts that you are careful that you give gifts to all of them so therefore if it means that you may have to buy a lesser gift because to buy expensive gifts for all of them is not possible then you buy lesser gifts that all of them can receive each, even if it is lesser in worth, because that is closer to justice. Barakallahu feekum. And upon that, inshallah, for today, we'll finish. Wazakumullahu khairan for listening in. And inshallah, we'll uh, tune, again, tune in again tomorrow. Bidhanillahi ta'ala. Wazakumullahu khairan. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.